Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Those of you who follow the channel know that back in November, I did a 110 mile ride from Orlando to Tampa with a group called Central Florida Cyclists. It was a great adventure. Long rides are not necessarily my favorite thing. At about the 90 mile mark, I did have a little bit of an issue with my nemesis, which is nutrition. I sorted myself out with salt tablets, getting a little bit of hydration, and then I was able to finish the ride strong. Well, tomorrow I'm joining them again. Not for 100 miles, but for a 120 mile ride from Jensen Beach, Florida down to Miami. And unlike the last time where I prepared by ramping up my mileage meticulously, this time I did no such thing. But one thing I am making sure I'm on top of is my equipment. So before I head up the road to Jensen Beach, Florida, I just decided to bring my bike out to shake it out, make sure everything was tip top. All right, let's go. The added peace of mind of a quick equipment check before a long ride is a must do in my book. I check my shifting, my steering, my tires and my chain as well. I'll be riding my Colnago V3RS on this tour. And since I recently reviewed the Elite Drive wheels, they have actually been a permanent placement on the bike. And so far I've been very impressed with them. For the group from Central Florida, this was a two day event. Friday morning, they left Winter Park for a 150 mile ride down to Jensen Beach, Hutchinson Island area, which is a start point for Saturday's ride. Then on day two, they'd be joined by myself, Lily, and a few other people from South Florida for a 120 mile trek down to Miami Beach. No doubt there were some tired legs. Made it to Hutchinson Island this afternoon around four. Tomorrow we leave at 5 a.m. We got 120 miles from here down to Miami, but it's just lovely here. I mean, I've lived in Florida for years and have never, I've driven by, but I've never really came by here. So we're all set. We're getting ready to go have dinner. We're gonna get to bed early. So Forza, tomorrow's gonna be awesome. Our host hotel was the Lucy right on the beach. And after checking in and getting situated, it was time to meet the group downstairs for dinner. Dinner time at multi-day tours provides both an opportunity to replenish with nutrients, but also to bond and swap war stories. Kyle G's is conveniently located right next to the hotel. I had snapper, it was delicious, green beans, and a type of cilantro rice. We all have an early day tomorrow, so we called it an early night. <laughs> I even got the short people. <laughs> we all woke up in seemingly high spirits and ready to go. Oh, dark, whatever it is, and Lily is chain looping. <laughs> Whether you are a morning person it's or done, not, Lily. on these tours, you definitely become one, at least functionally. Morning. Every CFC tour has a comprehensive SAG support system of at least two vehicles that carry our day bag, snacks and nutrition, tools and spares. They are ran by spouses or friends and they meet us at every rest stop. And they are amazing. All right, bright and early. It is 10 minutes to six, so we're leaving in 10 minutes. And uh, everybody's down here, we're ready to go. I've been up since four. I am ready to get on a bike and get going. I'll keep you guys updated as the ride goes. Throughout this video, I will share some tips that I find helpful in getting through long rides. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, just some things that I find helpful in not only getting through, but most importantly, enjoying the ride. So tip number one is pacing and effort. While it is important to have goals or an estimated time of completion, the effort required has to be factored in. For example, this group here focuses on maintaining a pace of 20 to 22 miles an hour on the flats, but we slow drastically for any climb or incline, basically maintaining the effort that was being done on the flats. So if we're doing 150 to 200 watts on the flats, we'll try to maintain that same effort on the climb. This discipline is of particular importance early on on the ride.
first stop where we stopped to, to get breakfast because we left the hotel before they started serving breakfast. So we're 20 miles into the ride, good pace, group is together. So, so far, so good. Hey, the real busy one. People gotta get to the beach. I know, it's the weekend, nobody's at work right now. Nope. After getting over the initial shock of the impact, Lillian was able to continue with no issues. The group slowed until she was able to work her way back up to speed. Central Florida Cyclist has a good connection with some cyclists in South Florida. So while I started with a group in Jensen Beach heading south, some of my friends rode north from Fort Lauderdale, departing at approximately the same time until they intersected the group on A1A. From there, we'd complete the ride together heading south. All right, this has been rest, rest stop number two. Um, good ride so far, we're at 43 miles. We're getting ready to head into, I don't even know where we are. We're just getting ready to get somewhere, but it's been awesome so far. <laughs> We got the Venge Vias twins. You hardly see them, let alone <laughs> two of them on the same ride. Just roll out, guys. Just roll out. Come on, guys. Grab a bike. Grab a bike. One day ride, right, Lewis? One day. One day. We got the South Florida reinforcements come up. This is my crew right here. My crew came up. The reinforcements, they're taking it to the front. <laughs> Tip number two is the importance of protecting our hands and our arms. Oftentimes on these events, we focus on the preparation of our legs, our fitness, our nutrition, and we completely neglect the consideration of holding our upper body up for four, five, six hours on these events. It takes a tremendous toll. I have seen people quit events because they just got plum worn out because they just were not able to sustain the physical exertion required. So make sure prior to the event, you incorporate some core work, also some upper body resistance training. And while on the ride, be conscious of not getting locked into any one hand position for too long. Move your hands around periodically from the drops to the tops to the hoods, just to give your body a little bit of a break. One of the things that's emphasized during the sag breaks is diligence. Do what you've got to do so we can get back on the pike and remain on schedule. No need to make the day any longer than it needs to be. Now at this point of the ride, I'm about to have a very satisfying encounter with a cyclist I met through our channel. We got room. Hey. Oh, oh, oh. Ho! Hey! Ho, ho, How ho. you doing? Good to see you. So a while back, I did a video on finding the motivation to ride. I'll post a link so that you can check that one out. And a young lady, her name is Shireen, commented and shared her journey and some of her challenges with me, which I found very inspiring. We kind of kept in touch by email 
And I know that she recently got back on the bike and it really was just a stroke of serendipity that we were at that intersection at the same time. Technically, this is still part of the third rest stop. I didn't film because I was really focusing on getting hydration into my system. Um, we're at 66 miles, still feeling good, but we're in um, Gulfstream. Yeah, the city of Gulfstream, beautiful out here. I don't really want to get back on the bike. <laughs> I'd rather just go right there. Tip number three, whenever possible, eat real food. Getting through long rides is obviously a combination of consuming carbs and protein, but the more you go into the ride, the more significant protein intake becomes. I do get enough electrolytes through gels and carbohydrate drinks, but peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, protein bars, chicken empanadas if they're available, and things like that go a long way in keeping me fueled. I also like bananas, honey buns, and fig bars. One important caveat is to avoid eating anything heavy or hard to digest if you're going to be putting down very hard efforts. Use gels and things like that to get over those humps. But eat when you have a lull in the action and you can digest the food properly. Coming into the Deerfield Beach area, car traffic always gets backed up with the weekenders and the beach goers trying to access the beach, obviously. But for me, this is a point of the ride where I'm starting to get on familiar roads and I'm definitely feeling close to home. But a big plus for me is that I'm still feeling very good physically.
Tip number four is enjoy the moment. Cycling, but particularly long rides, can oftentimes be a mental challenge. Over the years and through different experiences, I have had to find ways of keeping my body moving. One thing I often do is I just think about the end of the ride, where I may have a refreshing drink in one hand and a nice juicy burger in the other hand. I can see it now. And of course, some fries. <laughs> It's almost like a game of mental teleportation. But while that has gotten me through rides, I find that I miss so much. There are sceneries to enjoy, people to chat with, and just the moment that I am in. So on this ride, I shut the future off, and I just really try to savor every moment. That switch, that small change, made this ride very memorable. Do they have tiny burgers? Right. You can get one and eat it and, and cut it in half. Fine. My this, man Lewis. This is my supplier. Y'all don't need to know what he supplies. <laughs> but, he su it. but he supplied. <laughs> he supplies. <no. laughs> and if you ever want to make your bike ride interesting, uh -huh. oh yeah, invite dude. this guy. If you ever want to make your bike ride interesting, <laughs> and Miriam right here, Miriam keeps it civilized. Check this out. Look at the salt. Just to let you know what kind of day it is. So we're getting ready to pull up. I'll take my, my marker 103 and then we'll have uh, 13 miles to go after that. So far, so good.
This was the first of two mechanicals that we had in the last 20 miles of the ride. At this point, everybody was kind of ready to get off the bike, but despite that, we understand it happens and it really didn't dampen anybody's spirit. We just conformed, waited because we wanted to make sure that we finished as a group. And as soon as it was sorted, we got on with the ride. <laughs> All right, this is the last stop. We got 13 miles to go, and uh, everybody is like just motivated to get off the bike at this point. So we're gonna rock it in the last 14 miles. All right, ready? Right here. Is everyone in there? Did it. 120 miles in the books. We're done. We got here. Good time. A few mechanicals, the last little bit, but everybody made it safe. Good job, Rafael. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. We did 120 miles. 120? 200 kilometers. How you feeling? How you feeling? Remarkably fresh. Remarkably fresh. Remarkably fresh. He says that right now. He's going to pass out later. <laughs>